Hey gang, I'm Will from Tested. And I'm Norm from Tested. Norman Chan, you just had your first taste of HoloLens. That's right. Uh, so to let you guys know, I got a demo of HoloLens. We're going to be talking about a, a project that they showed here, but we're not going to be able to show you video of the demo or of the product itself. No cameras allowed. So we're going to paint a word picture for you, but Will, you got the demo of HoloLens at GDC. Yeah, so uh, actually Microsoft built earlier in right. April, I think. Um, I went through a two hour how to build an app for HoloLens experience, which involved a lot of putting on and taking off the glasses, um, seeing through the world. I mean, the things that I noticed immediately were that the, the projection was much more opaque than I expected, but the FOV is pretty low, especially what I was accustomed to seeing in their on-camera, on-stage demos. So like, if you put your hands and make a rectangle and put it about nine inches from your eyes, maybe a foot, that's about the area that you can project images into using the HoloLens. This yeah. is the same experience for you yeah. today? So that hasn't changed. And from everyone we've talked to, that field of view, both the horizontal and the vertical, that is something they know is a constraint. Now, they haven't said that that's going to be the final thing, but what they're showing here at E3 is games implementation. If you mm -hmm. watch the E3 press conference, you know they showed Minecraft, for example. I didn't see Minecraft. What I saw was something called Project X-Ray, developed in-house by Microsoft, and they called it a mixed reality uh, first person shooter. This is some real hardcore science fiction, Werner Vinge kind of business here. Now, um, what does mixed reality mean? It means that the game interacts with the room that you're in. Now, the room was a, it's a square room, uh, about, I'd say, 15 foot by 15 feet. Um, ceilings, you know, yay high. Coffee table? Lit, no coffee table, oh. but chairs on the side. And it was a shooter in the sense that uh, insects came out of the wall, robots came out of the wall, broke through the wall, came out of the wall, and using my head as the targeting, I could target them and hold a controller and fire at them. So, okay, so I think we should take a step back and, and tell exactly what this is. They have an augmented reality lens system that you can see through. See, unlike an Oculus Rift or the HTC Vive, Steam VR stuff, when you put the glasses on, you actually look through like a smoked glass viewpoint, viewport, and you see the world around you. Now, the, the headset has a bunch of sensors on it, including like depth cameras and, and you know IR movement sensors and all sorts of stuff like that in the front. So not only does it map the room uh, and, and you see the room through the glasses, it also is mapping the room and putting a three-dimensional mesh over the walls. When I did the programming demo, you could actually see the mesh and some of the stuff that you were right. seeing. And it's real low poly. Basically, it's looking for flat areas and then stuff that's not flat. And it seemed to only render stuff, in my demo at least, on flat areas. Flat areas for sure. And so behind the scenes, the HoloLens was, knows that the room is yay wide, the wall, wall, wall. What it seems to ignore though, even though the sensor probably taken, is furniture. And that's just a software thing. The developers chose, they only want it in this interaction for bugs to climb out of the wall. Which makes sense if Which you're having sense. bugs come out of the wall. Did they do the thing with the hole that looks like it yes. appears in the wall? So there was definitely a, it, it made it look like not only was there a hole, a crack in the wall and the hole there, like a pipe that came out of it, but also if I shot at the wall, it revealed like bricks behind it and piping behind it. So mixing what you see in your room with what, how they've programmed their game world. It's kind of dynamic in so, that sense. So like that stuff, it was a very convincing illusion. Um, even though they weren't actually making a hole in the wall when we, when we had these demos, they were shading the edges of the of the hole as if it were like a cartoon. Or I immediately thought of the hole in Who Framed Roger Rabbit, the the you know the, yep. the Acme hole. Yeah. You chuck it up on the wall, and then you'd see edges, and you could look through, and be completely different lighting, like a flat shaded right. kind of universe behind it. it, it it's self-contained. There's self -contained. no connection to a PC. Um, presumably using like Windows RT on ARM hardware, or, but we don't even know that. It's Windows 10 is what they said. Uh, the self-contained was really nice because uh, audio was really good without having to put. Uh, headphones on. Yeah, just, they have these little red things that pipe audio out into your ear holes, basically. And then also, it was lightweight. Ergonomics were interesting. Ergonomics, I think, is a real big story with all these HMDs, headsets VR or AR. The halo that you wear goes diagonally back here. Mm -hmm. Cups to the base of your skull, just yep. like the Morpheus does. You tighten the back, and then the front clamps over and works over your glasses. Um, now, that FOV does affect what type of game you can play. So in this shooter, you know, while the cur the I'm focused in the center, and that's where my targeting, that cursor is. I couldn't see the bugs until they came within that field of view. And how were they cueing you to tell you where the bugs were coming from? Sound? Sound and also uh, an arrow. Okay. So if it was outside of my field of view, there would be a red arrow, and I'd know to look in that direction, and I could see the bug. 
that ended up being a little jarring when there were lots of bugs and I obviously had to follow arrows, but once they were in the field of view and I could like step back and see a lot of the bugs, then I can precisely maneuver to shoot them. So one of the really neat things about uh, the experience that I had is that they talked about making these shared experiences. So instead of being like a VR experience where you put on the glasses, you put on a pair of headphones, and then basically you lose yourself in this virtual world, this was theoretically stuff that you could, that you and I could be working off of the same virtual stuff in the real world. Is this something that they're going to make multiplayer, or is this? They didn't say anything about multiplayer. I think it's just an experiment with how do you make a first-person shooter like that. When we've seen that uh, the, the Magic Leap uh, AR concept video that looked far-fetched with people crawling through walls, I think this demonstrated you can get part of that. Um, and I did lose a sense of what was real in terms of. Like, I walked up to a wall to look at the crack and look in the pipe, and I bumped into the chair in front of me because I forgot the chair was there. The, 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 the convincingness of the, of the I, I mean, I'm going to call them holograms. I don't think they're really holograms, but th that's what Microsoft calls them, just to keep it simple. Um, th they're opaque to the point that if you hold your hand up in front of the, in front of the rendering, you, you, you can see the kind of the outlines of your hand. You know your hand's there, yeah. but it's, the, the vision is still very transparent, uh, uh, opaque. Even in a well-lit room, uh, I, could, I could try to put my hand in front of the, the monster, and my hand, I could see, you know, it was like looking through a, like, a, like one of those uh, Google Glass, but much brighter. Mm -hmm. um, and it was very responsive. You know, I shook my head. It was very responsive. Did you notice the judder as you were like rotating around stuff, or not so much? Not so much. But I could only get so close to something. If I tried to get real up close to the bug, then it, it just disappeared. You clipped through it. Yeah. So that's exactly. a that's actually a dev configurable. We got to tweak that setting when we did our demo, and you can change the clip plane from way in front of the face to right in front of it. So I was able to get right up on stuff. Um, that's totally just in the software. Um, do you get motion sickness in VR sometimes? Any kind, mm, anything like that? Nothing here, I, because. The frosted glass, it's, the world is still really clear around you. It meshes really well. Um, I think for slower experiences like that Minecraft where you're just observing you know, a projection, a layer of something static or something simple on a, on a mm -hmm. flat surface, uh, it's, gonna be, it's, it's gonna be very comfortable. So my, my last question for you is interaction on the thing. When I did the demos, everything was controlled with a cursor that was basically in the center of your field of vision, yeah. and then you did pinches to interact with that, and I you was, could use some voice commands. Yeah. Anything Here, new? Just the cursor, and I was using an Xbox controller, left and right sticks, and I was actually just holding it down on the side, on, on, on my side to, to fire. Like the okay. Yeah. So, so a very basic that. demo, but really yeah, neat implementation. Um, and I uh, hope that we'll see, I think they're going to bring out more of HoloLens throughout the year. Hopefully we'll see more of that and be able to share that with you. Um, but that was our HoloLens demo at yep. E3 2015. We'll have more on Tested real soon. See you guys later. Bye.